Everyone, welcome to the Doctors Running Podcast, where we, a group of doctors of physical therapy, talk about the art and the science of the things that we're putting on our feet. Today, we're going to do a little recap, just of some things that I've thought about and learned throughout this last year and experience with a couple different shoes that I want to talk about. And that thing that I want to talk about is length. So I've done a podcast before talking about fit as part of the run cat, which if you haven't listened to that, I would really encourage you to try to go, hey, when you're looking for shoes, how do you really decide what works for you, what might not in terms of all the different factors that some of the research has found tends to be the most significant. And believe it or not, a lot of the biomechanical factors don't always relate. So definitely go check out that episode. But what I want to talk about is length because one of the most common questions that we get is, hey, how much room should I have at the end of the shoe? How much room should I have between my toes in the end of the shoe? What does fit play anything into any certain types of pathologies? What do I need to think about in terms of fit and the arch? So I want to talk about all of those things today and give you kind of what I've learned and what I've th thought about over the last couple of years, especially this last year, as we've gotten a couple of shoes that have actually fit long and realized some of the biomechanical implications, some of the injury implications, just give you some stuff to think about. So what is length? Length really refers to how long the shoe is, right? So you have your, you put your foot in there and there should be at least a little bit of room between your toes and the end of the shoe. If there isn't any room, your toes are going to be hitting the, the, very, very end of the shoe. And there's a risk for a various number of things. Obviously, comfort is the first thing. If your feet are pressing up against the end of the shoe, it might not be comfortable. You're very much at risk for things like blisters or pressure type injuries. If you're kind of moving and sliding and there's excessive pressure from like, say, a toe guard, which is what this thing is, right, where it gives a little bit more structure to the front of the shoe, you can get pressure injuries blisters, all kinds of stuff. The other thing that can sometimes you can compensate with, and you'll see this in certain people, is you can actually get toe curling. So if a shoe is too short, people will curl or flex their toes to try to make the shoe a better length. And we'll talk about how that might impact a couple of pathologies. That's not really the best thing you want. You really want a shoe that allows your feet to stay in a neutral position, right? So your toes don't have to be curled. They don't have to be excessively extended. They can handle in a neutral position to be somewhat comfortable without way too much room or too little room. Okay. There's some pathologies we'll talk about, but Again, you really want a shoe that actually matches your feet. One of the biggest things that I've noticed over time is I've worked with patients and kind of just looked at, hey, how, how's this shoe working for you? And people don't even come to me for that. So they're usually coming in for some injury. I've noticed a lot of people that will wear shoes that are not fitting them lengthwise appropriately. Frequently, the most common reason is they have a shoe that's way too narrow for them. So they went up multiple sizes to try to get somewhat of a width and their feet are still hanging off the side of the shoe. That really means that shoe's not working for you. Your feet shouldn't be hanging off the side. I know we're not talking about width, but you're all these factors. So width, how wide the shoe is, the length, how long it is, and the volume, how much room you have up and down height-wise should all match together to match your foot type. And sometimes that can be really hard because we're all trying to find shoes that fit our feet and none of these companies are designing shoes for any of us. I mean, they're based on a couple people or some a couple averages, but they're not based on us as unique people. Our feet are different. And some of the challenges that you're going to experience here is what I'm going to list. So our feet are all different. They're even different side to side. I don't know if you've noticed that people don't have, are not symmetrical at all. It's actually very normal to have feet that are two different sizes. How big those sizes very much depends on the person. I can tell you my left foot is longer than my right foot. My left foot, based on using a Brannock device, which I'll be very surprised if you know what that is. I'm probably dating myself a little bit for working in running stores many years ago, but those are those like metal things that you put your foot on. It tells you what your true size is. Um, I don't know how many stores actually have those anymore. Somebody comment below and let me know if if those actually exist anymore. Uh, they still sell them on Amazon. They're really expensive um, for what I think they're worth. But so my left side is technically a size 10. My right side is actually a nine and a half. I always accommodate to my left foot and deal with the consequences on my right side. I've just gotten used to that over the years. Sometimes it's more pronounced for certain people. Unfortunately, nobody really sells shoes, at least in major running brands that are that, that don't nobody sells shoes that are different sizes on left and right. Brooks actually did that briefly. I believe they do not do that anymore. But that used to be a thing. So generally, we have to find the foot that's the longest length, and there's going to be some variability. That is normal. Don't freak out about that. That is totally normal. It's more abnormal to have feet that are truly the same size. So don't freak out. So you got feet that are different size length. You've got feet that will change throughout the day. The length, width, and volume of your feet are going to change depending on what time of day it is. So if it's early morning, your feet are generally going to be the smallest and shortest they're going to be throughout the day. 
as you go throughout the day, you've been standing, you've been walking, it is very normal for blood to start pooling in your feet to a degree. If you have massive pooling, that's not normal. You should go see a medical professional for that. But some degree of swelling and change in length of your foot is totally normal as you go throughout the day. It's just gravity, right? As you've been supine or like laying flat or whatever position, supine, prone, sideline, whatever. When you've been lying down, gravity doesn't influence blood flow as much. When you've been upright standing most of the day, gravity is naturally going to cause a little bit of pulling in your feet. Okay. The more you move, sometimes that can offset that, but it's naturally your feet are going to change sizes throughout the day. That's why generally it's suggested if you're going to try a shoe on, it might be best to do that later in the day or at least midday because that's going to give you the best average of what your feet are truly going to be. And that's also why it's very common. You'll try a shoe on at the end of the day and then try it in the morning and go, wait, this feels long. Or you try a shoe on in the morning and then you run it in the evening. You're like, wait, why does it feel short? That's, that's why. Okay. That's normal. That happens. Okay. The other thing that can also happen is people have different shapes of feet. So even though we're talking about length here, where the arch of the shoe is, where all this stuff that can vary depending on like how the shoe is designed and your foot can vary. So you might have a shoe where you actually have to go up or half down a half size just to get something like the arch to fit. Okay. You can modify that. And fortunately, a lot of shoes don't have high arches. So this usually isn't as big of a problem. I'm also someone who's not really sensitive to that. So I don't usually think about it. I've been trying to think about it more, but people are going to have different size sh feet and different shape feet. So length is one piece, but let's talk about how length can actually impact that. And one of the things I really want to encourage you is, I know I mentioned this earlier, if you are having to go like two sizes up in a shoe just to get adequate width, that is not an appropriate shoe for you, okay? You are wearing a shoe that's way too long and that's going to cause its own problems. One of the biggest things you need to think about is that a shoe is an extension of your foot. And one of the shoes that made me think the most about this was the Salomon S-Lab Phantasm 2 this year, which was a super shoe that I bought. I was really interested in it and uh, I bought it and it went, it's totally out. I don't know when they're going to restock them, but they're not available at the moment. So I can't send this back for a resize. And I found this shoe fits truly a half size long. So when I was running in it, when I, you know, I was like, why is there so much extra width? And what I found is again, shoes should match the biomechanics of your feet. So especially with carbon plated shoes, the rocker, the plate needs to line up with your first toe. We've talked about this before. It needs to line up with the mechanics of your first metatarsal joints, because that's where you normally pivot from. If you are not lining up with that, you're going to be pivoting early or late, depending on where you are. Later is usually a little bit better. So that's why I usually encourage a longer heel, a longer forefoot rocker. But if the apex of the rocker, a, ba the major point that it comes from is, is too late, it's going to make the shoe feel really stiff. A shoe that I was really apparent, this became apparent with is the Adidas Adios Pro 1, which it has super late rocker and the shoe just felt so stiff because where I was towing off was too early. So I was hitting an area of the shoe that wasn't really moving and I was trying to push off. And so what ends up happening is your calves have to work a lot harder. Your toe flexors have to work a lot harder. And it just puts a lot of stress through a lot of different structures that help you push off because you're trying to push off through an area that doesn't normally flex. So this became apparent with the shoe where I found that doing easy runs and tempo runs did not feel good. And I'm like, this shoe costs like 275 bucks that that is, this should feel good for all of that. And it's because the, the length wasn't matching. When I started running really fast, the additional stiffness actually started to feel really good. So I did a mild time trial against my students in this shoe. And when I was running really fast, although the kind of fit was a little off it, I could really push through because that's when that stiffness actually came in handy. So that's, it was a great example to me going with a length is super duper important. It's an extension of your foot. And if you have a shoe that's not fitting you the right length, you're going to be pivoting and the mechanics of the shoe may not match your foot. So it's, it might feel stiffer. It might feel a little bit normal. It might flex in a weird place. It might be flexing, for example, instead of flexing and I'm holding a model of foot, instead of flexing right where your first metatarsal joints are, metatarsal phalangeal joints, it might be flexing over your toe joints with like your, your, your distal interphalangeal joints, your proximal phalangeal joints. These joints aren't supposed to extend, right? Which is what you're doing is you toe off. They're supposed to flex. So if you're excessively extending through an area that's not supposed to do that, it might cause you some issues. Okay. So that's why, again, 
length is really, really important. And if a shoe is too long for you, it's going to make your calves and your toe flexors and all the, and it's going to, it could potentially put more stress through structures like your plantar fascia because it's too long and you're pushing through a stiffer shoe. That's just how it works. Doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get injured. I'm saying it's going to put more stress there. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get hurt. It just means it might make the shoe feel a little bit stiffer. That's normal. Unless, of course, you have a shoe like Zero Shoes, which I'm holding up now, which there's no stiffness to the midsole. So no matter where you toe off, it's going to flex with your foot. So that's not really an issue for a more minimal shoe. Although you might, because they're usually so wide, you might get some additional sliding. And that's the other issue with having a shoe this long is you are going to need to really lock down the shoe or else you're going to be sliding back and forth. And that can cause blisters on the bottom of your feet. So again, a shoe that's too long can be a little bit problematic, but we'll talk about how, why that might be a benefit for some people. A shoe that's too short is probably e is even worse because a shoe that's too short is going to cause you to do things like curl your toes. You're going to be slamming into the end of the shoe. You can get bruising on your distal toe joints, which actually is very, very common, right? So if you're sliding back and forth and slamming into the end of the shoe, you can get blisters. You can get... um trauma to the end, of the end of the toes, it does happen. So I think a shoe that's too short, not great. The other really common thing that I mentioned is people will often flex their toes to shorten the shoe up, okay? Which, yes, technically does accommodate that, but you're asking the muscles that flex your toes, so there's two ones, or two major ones, your long toe flexors, which start up like behind your calves, and then your short toe flexors. So if those are contracted constantly over the entire time that you're wearing the shoe, let's say you're going for an hour run, or let's say you're wearing these all day long for 8 to 10 to 12 hours a day. You are keeping these muscles in an isometric contraction for that long. I don't know if you know this, but muscles usually don't like to contract for that long. A lot of muscles like to contract and then relax, okay? Contract, relax, turn on when they need to, turn off when they don't. There are some muscle groups in our body that can do this all day long, like your neck muscles, your back muscles, your core. Those are muscles that can contract all day long. Some of these more smaller intrinsic muscles don't always want to do that because they don't have the size and capacity to handle that. So you're asking for these muscles to get stiff, painful, and uncomfortable unless you have trained them to be able to tolerate that. So that's probably not the best position. You really want your toes to be in a more neutral position in the middle, not flexed or excessively extended all the time. So the muscles can be at what's called a neutral length, which is where they're usually the most comfortable and the most efficient. So that can cause a lot of toe flexion issues. A lot of times people will start getting pain in the bottom of their foot or arches and that usually will be diagnosed with plantar fasciitis, which really make sure if anybody diagnoses you with that, make sure they've actually examined you and actually make sure that's coming from the plantar fascia because you have a ton of stuff on the bottom of your foot that is not your plantar fascia. So a lot of those small toe flexors that I mentioned earlier, those muscle bellies are on the bottom of your foot and also get irritated. So it's very common for those to be painful in this situation where the shoe is too short. Now, to be fair, your plantar fascia actually does get put on a lot of stretch when you flex your toes because it starts at your heel and goes all the way to the very, very beginnings of your toe joints. So if you flex your toe joints up, it technically puts tension on the plantar fascia, which is great for a short period of time. Like when you're running, when you need to toe off and you need to create a stiff foot, that's a great time to create tension there. But you don't want that there all the time because that tissue, like anything else, can get irritated. The plantar fascia is kind of like a tendon. It doesn't get as good a blood flow and it takes a lot longer to heal when things get irritated, which is why when you have plantar fasciitis, it seems to take forever to heal. Guess what? That's normal. It doesn't get the normal blood flow that other things do. So if your toes are very, very flexed all the time, you are technically put, putting the plantar fascia on stretch and you're holding it and yanking on it every time you toe off. So that might, it might not, everybody's different. Everybody has different tolerances and things like that that influences. That might also influence your risk for plantar fasciitis. That is not confirmed. There's not a lot of shoe stuff that's confirmed with that. This is just clinical and anecdotal stuff. So just be aware it's anecdotal. I am admitting that to you, but that is why you want to find a shoe that fits really the bet, the tr true to size to you. That's why we talk about the fact that, you know, I'll always reference, does this shoe fit true to size for me? And I'm going to encourage you if you're reading our reviews or anybody else's reviews, find someone whose feet seem to fit similar to you. That might take one or two pairs of shoes to test out. Not everyone's going to have the same size feet as me or the same, rel the, like, 
relevant fit. So if let's say I'm a size 10, that's typically what I go for in the majority of shoes out there. You might fit a size nine or a size 11 or size eight, seven, whatever. Just you have to figure out is your, are your feet matching to kind of what mine are in like as a reference. Okay. You might not, you might be a quarter size down for me or ha- like, and that might, your fit might not be some of mine. So again, as always try to find someone who has a similar fit to you that you can relate to that might may or may not be one of us i hope it is it might not so find somebody that is so that's why we always comment on how long the shoe is because that we want to give you an idea of hey should you think about a half size down should you think about a half size up the salmon s lab phantasm and also the on cloud boom echo or two shoes where i go you know what i might really consider a half size down you might have a different experience but i actually modified the salmon s lab phantasm by putting some extra um an arch pad back in the heel to shorten the shoe up and all of a sudden the transition was way better the heel is a little awkward because now my heel's sitting a little farther forward but it the toe off was a lot better so i was like yep a half size better would probably be fine although please don't quote me on that because i can almost bet you money that salomon probably might fix that with the newest with the next round of these shoes and that's the challenge with certain companies that don't put out as good a volume. You don't know how each batch is going to show up. And there is variability with that. Um, my first experience with that was with the Adidas Adios Tempo series, like way back with like version three or four, when I realized shoes could be totally different lengths depending on market and, and factory settings. So just be aware of that's throwing a never mind. So you're probably as, asking at this point, hey, he's been talking for 16 minutes. How do I know how a shoe is supposed to fit me? So for normal running, for road running, normal running, actually I shouldn't say road running, for normal distance running, short stuff, moderate distance stuff, a shoe should fit, at least what I was told, the kind of key thing is a half to full thumbs width between the end of your longest toe and the end of the shoe. I know that's not the most scientific thing because everybody has different thumb sizes and different thumb widths. So again, it's not this, it's this, if you can see me, okay? That's just a general rule of thumb. Haha, <laughs> I made that joke before. I know it's terrible uh, every time I make it. But that's a general rule to go, hey, just to make sure you have enough room there. When you put the shoe on, it shouldn't feel like it's way too long. And you can test that by actually like walking and running in the shoe. If you feel like you're kind of sliding back and forth or just feels like there's too much room, that's maybe a shoe that's too long. If you feel like your feet are hitting the end of the shoe, that's definitely too short. Your toes should not be hitting the end of the shoe because if they are when you're just standing and walking during running, you're going to get more translation that's going to bug you. So the half to full thumbs width is actually works pretty well. I've yet to have that fail on me. Again, it's anecdotal. Nobody's ever done research on that, but it's just a good way to go. Hey, is this a good test? Shoes are going to fit different though. Toe boxes are a great thing. Again, so you can have a, I've just discovered this with the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro Series where you can have a shoe that has a wide forefoot, but the toe box tapers. And the difference between that is the forefoot is where your metatarsal joints are or metatarsal phalangeal joints are. The toe box is where your actual toes sit. So those can actually be two different things. So sometimes when things taper really quick, again, if there's a quick taper, the distance between your longest toe, it could be your, it could be your big toe, your hallux, it could be your second toe. That might be hitting the end of the shoe. So you might go, hey, I might need something a little bit longer. So you should have a little bit of room between your toes and the end of the shoe. It shouldn't be too much. It shouldn't be too middle, too little. It should be right in a, a certain amount. And that's where the thumb rule kind of comes into play. Um, just to throw in some additional stuff for you, if you are wearing insoles, that's also going to take up more length and room. So there are specific shoes meant for insoles. This is answering the first people question that people ask is, hey, how do I do length with insoles? So there's two really great shoes out there that I really, really are my go-to for recommending if you need insoles. The Brooks Ghost Max and the Saucony Echelon 9 are two phenomenal shoes that are actually designed to take insoles. And the reason they're designed to take that is that when you take the, the factory insole out, it's actually really thick. It's really that they prepared this so that when you took that thing out, there'd be a little extra room and volume in there so that when you put an orthotic in there, there's already space for that. A lot of other shoes don't do that. The insoles are a little bit thin or as I've learned, the insoles are actually designed to go with the shoe. So if you just yank the insole out in a lot of shoes, you're taking away something that the shoe was designed with. So just be aware of that. But if you want a shoe that can take orthotics, you're going to want a shoe that is designed specifically for them. So that's why the Ghost Max, Socket Echelon 9 are going to be two really, really, really good ones. Outside of that, you might need to go a half size up, especially if you want a racing shoe, especially if...
the size might get modified if you put something like an orthotic in there. You might need a half size up because it's oftentimes orthotics are naturally going to take up a little bit more room, and that includes lengthwise. Another group that are going to have to think about this, and this is a great question because somebody asked, do road shoes and trail shoes, do they fit? Do you need to get the same size? Are they, should they fit different? The answer is very commonly those two will fit differently. And the reason why they'll frequently fit differently is because trail shoes will often have much thicker uppers. This is actually not the best example. Uh, I was grabbing the Saucony, one of the Saucony Endorphin Trail series. Um, trail shoes will often have much thicker uppers. And that's because when you're running on trail, there's a lot more jury, there's a lot more hazards, and you need additional protection here, okay? A road shoe will often have a thinner upper because you really don't need protection up top. You just need something that holds you on the platform. Now, that's changing because a lot of the trail uppers are getting thinner, but there's something you need to be aware of because oftentimes when people are talking about trail, they're also talking about being on their feet for a lot longer. An eight-mile run on technical trail is a very different thing than an eight-mile run on road. The technical one is going to take a lot longer. It can sometimes take double the amount of time. If you remember what I talked about earlier is that the amount of time on your feet and the amount of like the amount of like the throughout the day can affect things. Running can also make an impact. So if you're doing a short run, your feet may not change that length that much. Okay. Cause they're not going to swell that much. If you're out there for one, two, three, four hours, you may have noticed, Hey, my shoes don't fit the same as when I first started. And cause just like going throughout the day, when you run, you're pounding on your feet. It is very normal to get a little bit of capillary rupture. That's just normal. Don't freak out, but a little bit of swelling in your feet. And so your feet are going to chase size throughout the run. So when you're on your feet for longer, a trail shoe, you actually might need a little bit more room. I'd often try at times trail shoes can fit just a little bit short because upper is a little bit thicker. The, the size can be different. So just be, make sure you test that. The other group that needs to be aware of this is ultra marathoners. So there's a lot of, most ultra marathoners tend to be on road. There's a couple on, I'm uh, sorry, on trail. There's a couple on road, which <coughs> I totally get. But when you're on your feet for hours, sometimes days at a time, your feet are definitely going to change length. So your feet are definitely going to change length and size as you're doing a long, long trail run or an ultra marathon because you're pounding, pounding, pounding. Your feet are going to swell, 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 swell. So a lot of ultra marathoners will intentionally get a shoe that's a half or full size up. It makes total sense because they know their feet are going to swell throughout the length of the run. The things you need to be aware of is that when you do that, okay, you're going to be towing off through a different spot. That might mean the first part of your ultra marathon, the shoe actually might feel a little bit stiffer because you may not be hitting the right rocker. But as that goes on, all of a sudden, you go, know, oh, all of a sudden the shoes got smoother. It's not the shoe, it's that your foot finally swelled enough and changed enough that it's actually starting to match where the mechanics are. So ultra marathoners are kind of in a challenging boat because your feet are going to change. They're going to change with size and with volume and size slash length. So trail shoes can be a really hard thing. And so, yes, oftentimes trail shoes may need to fit a little bit different because the uppers are thicker. And based on how long you're going to be out there, that also can impact you might need a half size up because the last thing you want is your toes suddenly getting smashed because they're swelling and getting a ton of those bruises and, and stuff and things there. So that does happen. So trail shoes often can fit different. The other challenge with trail shoes is that, yes, you need a little extra, you sometimes need a little extra length, but you still need to have good security. So the thicker uppers can help with this, but you're on uneven terrain. And this goes into width and other things that were not necessarily the focus of this, but trail shoes need to fit different because you need more security in a trail shoe than you just need a road shoe, unless you're doing some crazy technical road route, which there's variation in that. But a lot of road is going to be fairly straight and flat. There's not going to be a lot of things that are jostling you back and forth. Trail will definitely do that where you need to have a shoe that stays locked in on your foot all the time, which can be really challenging to get that optimal fit. And you're not going to know that in a store. I'm be totally honest with you. A lot of trail shoes, you're going to need to go test them and go, Hey, can they handle this? What happens to my toes? Unless the store has like different terrain and things you can test on, you're not going to know until you'll get out there. Cause and trail shoes, I've had more trouble getting an optimal fit than I have road shoes. So yes, they fit different. Yes. Length becomes more important. If you get a longer shoe because you know your feet are going to swell, there are some biomechanical things that can happen that you just think accept that the shoe might be stiffer. That's just how it goes. The other group that needs to think about this is those with pathology. So we've had a lot of questions. Hey, what size do I need for bunions? What size do I need for hammer toes, for plantar fasciitis, for, for hallux, like valgus, for stuff like that? Just know that the shoe that you pick, 
not only needs to have enough length, it needs to have enough width. So a lot of those issues, so bunions for sure, uh, hallux valgus, which is where your toe is adduct, your big toe is adducting inwards or going outwards. Uh, sorry, it's actually technically going lateral is the correct term. It's going out. A lot of this comes into having shoes that are pushing your toes inwards because they're not wide enough. Many people will get shoes extra long to try to compensate for that. But then the challenge is, like I mentioned earlier, you're towing off in an area that's not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily have the right stiffness. So oftentimes what you'll compensate by doing is collapsing in to get around where that stiffness is and you'll pivot off the medial side of the shoe, which ends up actually putting more pressure on the inner side of your toe, which can create more pressure there, which is something that can cause and influence bunions over many, many years. Okay. That is why having a shoe that's not only long enough but also wide enough is really important because you should be able to have be able to spread your toes out a little bit. Unless you're running a track spike and then it's short enough, hopefully, that you don't have to do this for too long, you should be able to spread your toes a little bit with any shoe. If you feel like you get the right length but the shoe is too narrow, that might not be the right shoe for you. That might be something you have to consider. So a lot of the things that I talked about have to do with, with width, <clears throat> and if you are trying having to go exercises up to get the right width, you might not have enough room. There are a lot of good options that have wider toe boxes out there. Now, fortunately, um, some two really go-to standards has been Ultra and Topo, who have done a phenomenal job. Obviously, more minimal companies like Zero can certainly come to mind. But if you want a more normal shoe with cushioning, Ultra and Topo have done a really, really good job with this because not only do they shoes, make shoes that are true to size, but they also have really wide toe boxes. So you don't have to necessarily go up a size and a half to get enough room because there's already enough width in there. Both Companies make really great shoes, not just for running, but also for walking. I will say the Topo, the Topo, sorry, I can barely pronounce companies' names in English as it is. The Topo Atmos and the Ultra Via Olympus 2 are two really awesome shoes that have a little bit more cushioning and really wide toe boxes. For those that stand all day and want a shoe that actually fits them true to size, those can be really good options. They obviously have full lines that you can take a look at that match what your feet need. But for a lot of those things, you want to make sure that you have enough room in the shoe. For hammer toes, which is another question, you really need to make sure you have enough length. Hammer toes often happen because of excessive tightening of the toe flexors. You can, you can then happen because of some pathology, or they can happen because your shoe's too short, and you're shortening your toes just to be able to deal with this. And when I say shoe too short, there's two variations of this, as I've discovered recently. There can be a too short because the actual length is too short. There can also be a too short because the toe spring or the upward curve at the front of the shoe can be too aggressive and your toes are actually getting extended more than they want and you'll short, they'll shorten to try to basically create a true to size fit. So watch out for shoes with excessive toe spring and the toe spring is different than a forefoot rocker. Toe spring is how much your toes are held in extension. Forefoot rocker is the actual curve at the bottom of the shoe. So if a shoe is too short or has too much toe spring, you might still curl your toes and that might create some additional pressure or create put you at risk for things like hammer toes, rear toes, either get stuck in that position from a joint perspective or the toe flexors get shortened. The last thing is plantar fasciitis. And I mentioned this earlier that a shoe that's too short where you shorten your toes up and you put more stress and tighten that thing up all the time or a shoe that's too long where you have to push off harder and the plantar fascia is part of your gastroxylus and your calf complex to help transfer forces you push off. If you're trying to toe off through something that's too stiff, that actually can increase the amount of symptoms through your, uh, or the amount of strain through your plantar fascia. So things like oftentimes we give people orthotics and stiffening agents for plantar fascia, which plantar fasciitis, which can be helpful from an arch perspective. If it's, if you're not towing off in the right place, it can actually put more stress there. So stiff shoes in some cases, stiff and hard shoes can actually be a risk factor for the development of plantar fasciitis. Does it mean super soft shoes are any better for it? It's finding that best amount for you. But again, you want to make sure things are just right. And that really goes back to making sure your, your shoes fit just right. And that's going to mean you probably need to try them on. You need to find out, use that half to full thumbs width from the longest, your longest toe, not somebody else's. And you need to go, hey, where it, it doesn't feel like I'm towing off in the right area. So you can't just stand there and go, how's it feel? You actually need to walk, run it and go, am I actually towing off? Does it feel smooth as I go over the forefoot? Does it feel like my toes are hitting the end or if they're sliding around? That's going to help you get a, a better fit. If you do need to get a longer shoe, like if you're doing an ultra marathon and you know your feet are going to swell, or if you're somebody whose feet naturally swell throughout the day, you just need to know that the shoe is going to feel a little bit stiff initially. That is normal. You have to figure out if you can tolerate that, first of all, and if it's worth it in the long run. And that's just something you need to do. If 
you are doing this with a shoe and you find you don't have enough width, you might want a shoe that fits wider, right? Ultra, um, Zero, Topo, all these other uh, companies have shoes that are wider. So you can, you have the stuff out there. If you're wearing an orthotic, please get a shoe that's actually meant for orthotics. We've talked about this extensively, but the Ghost Max and the Socket Echelon are two great ones. Please avoid stability shoes. And we mentioned this before because stability shoes are not ma- made are not made to be used with orthotics because they already have stabilizing elements in them. So how that's going to interact with the orthotic, we don't know. So unless if you're trying this for the first time, typically try to get a neutral shoe with that or try to get something that has enough length and room to begin with. So those are just some of my thoughts, some of the things I thought about with some of the shoes over the last year in 2023. I know we're releasing this in 2024, but I hope that helps give you an answer. And I know it's not the most technical thing is that half to full thumbs with, but that's why this is really important. And these kind of things can contribute to pathology in certain people, although we don't have a lot of evidence for this. It's mostly anecdotal, but it also can be a tool that you can mess with. You can create a shoe that's longer for you if you know your feet are going to swell. You can try to get a shoe that fits true to size or modify things for you. And that's kind of the the end of this is that you need to find something that works for you as an individual. Nobody likes that infer- that answer, but you have to find what your feet like. You have to find how wide they are, how long they are. And that's going to vary a little bit with every, every company. That's why we try to do this and go, hey, we're going to test these shoes out. Sometimes we're lucky enough that companies will send stuff. Sometimes we get to buy it. And we're going to be the ones to tell you, hey, if, you, if one of us has a, a, a foot that's similar to yours, hopefully you can learn from our, uh, how do I say this? our successes and our failures when we find an issue that doesn't or doesn't work. And that's why we do this. So if we can help you with that, that's great. But we also help you learn what's best for you so you can start making those decisions. As always, we hope this helps. We're trying to put out as much great stuff as possible. There's a lot of really great things that are coming in 24, that, 2024 that we'll hope you'll stick around for. But in the meantime, hope that was helpful and hope you have a great new year.